This is the solution video for quiz number three in our exponents unit for the 3B class section, so just 3B only. For number one, we are given a power to a power rule. When that happens, we need to multiply our exponents. So multiplying three times negative seven gives me x to the negative 21st power. However, I can't have negative exponents in my final answer. So I'm going to change this to a fraction by putting it over 1, because the rule is if we have a negative exponent, we just move it to the other side of the fraction, and it becomes positive. So I now have x to the positive 21st power in the denominator. Since there's nothing left in the numerator, I just need to put 1 as a placeholder, and that's my answer. Number two looks like a division rule problem, but if we look at the coefficient 10, there's nothing to reduce it with or divide it by. We only see a, b, and c written once each, so we can't subtract any numbers because we don't have any of the same variable. So the only thing left to do would be to move any negative exponents. So there are two negative exponents. For my final answer, First, I want to write what isn't moving. The 10 is staying. The b to the 8th is staying. However, that a to the negative 6 is going to move to the denominator and become a to the positive 6. The c to the negative 3rd in the denominator is going to move to the numerator and become c to the positive 3rd. This is now my final answer. Number three is going to be our division rule. We just have to be extra careful because we got a lot of negative numbers and subtracting with negatives can be difficult. So the first thing we're going to do is look at those coefficients. Reduce the fraction 3 over 15. That gives me 1 over 5. Both of those numbers are divisible by 3. Next, I can look at my f exponents. I have negative 2 in the numerator, a negative 7 in the denominator, and the rule is that you subtract them. Negative 2 minus negative 7 is positive 5 because the minus a negative changes to adding, so that gives me a fifth power for the f variable. Next, we can look at the g's. We have 5 in the numerator, negative 2 in the denominator, once again, we subtract, so that does change to adding a positive, which will give us a new exponent of 7. And then last but not least, we have our h's. We have a 4 in the numerator, and there is no exponent in the denominator, so that means it's really a 1. When we subtract those, we get a new exponent of 3. So here's where we check, does anything need to get moved? And that answer is no. There are no negative exponents. Our fraction's fully reduced, and we only see each variable one time. So I'm just going to rewrite it without the one in front. But again, if you want to keep the one out in front, that's all right with me. Let's take a look at number four and five. So number four, we have a fraction to a power. The first thing we always check for when we see problems like this is can we simplify anything inside? So that answer is no. We have a two in the denominator, b in the numerator, c in the denominator. There's nothing to simplify inside. So the trick is we can get rid of that negative sign. We can change negative three to positive three as long as we flip everything inside. So the 2, c to the 8th, goes to the numerator, and the b to the 5th goes to the denominator. From here, we split our fractions, so we take our numerator to the power and the denominator to the power. We have to do both sides of the fraction. So this is our power rule. So to finish this problem, we apply the power rule to the numerator. 2 to the third power is 8. 
The special rule for exponents is to multiply them. So 8 times 3 gives me c to the 24th. And we'll do the same thing in the denominator. Multiply those exponents. 5 times 3 gives me b to the 15th. Taking a look at number 5. Why would this answer not get full credit? So there's three things we check for. One, is the fraction fully reduced? If I look at 3 over 4, that's a fully reduced fraction, so that's not it. Our next thing we check for is no negative exponents. I don't see any negative exponents. So the only thing it could possibly be was to check for if each variable is represented one time. I have an x to the 12 in the numerator, but I also have an x in the denominator. So they needed to complete this problem by doing the division rule. We can say that why it wouldn't get full credit. We can say something as simple as x is written more than once. The last step would be to subtract. So you didn't have to correct the problem, but I do just in case you're curious. So like I said, the 3 fourths can't reduce, but we would have to take 12 and subtract 1, which would give us x to the 11th in the numerator. And then the y squared is all good in the denominator. So again, you did not have to do that, but just in case you wanted to know what a fully simplified answer looked like. Thank you for listening.